Medtronic Technologies impacted more than 72 million people in the last year, equating to two people every second. Harnessing the power of technology to take healthcare further, each technology has unique benefits designed to serve patients. The goal of this program is to get closer to the patient and delve into the challenges and impact of each technology in practice. This is the Medtronic MedEd learning experience. The Nelcor pulse oximetry monitoring system should not be used as the sole basis for diagnosis or therapy and is intended only as an adjunct in patient assessment. Medtronic's medical education programs are offered to provide attendees education on the FDA cleared indications and use of our products when applicable. The contents and conclusions of the following program are solely those of the speakers unless otherwise cited. The speakers are responsible for all content and any necessary permissions. The speakers receive funding from Covidian LP, a Medtronic company, for this speaking engagement. For this introduction segment of the series, a discussion on the Nelcor technology. We will discuss the technical fundamentals of pulse oximetry technology. To help provide insight into this topic is Jake Dove, Senior Principal R&D Engineer at Medtronic. We can break the fundamentals into three important parts. First, that oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin absorb light differently. Two, as arterial blood content changes, so does the LED light absorption. And three, a calibration curve can be used to convert the ratio of red and infrared absorption to SpO2. So as we get started to look at how oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin absorb light differently, we can look at the absorption spectra. So an absorption spectra is looking at the absorption coefficient. So here, increasing absorption coefficient equals increasing light attenuation versus on the horizontal axis, the wavelength or the color of the light. So here we can see oxygenated hemoglobin as the red curve. And that would be the case where we have 100% arterial saturation. So all the hemoglobin has oxygen bound to it. That's contrasted with deoxygenated hemoglobin, shown as the blue curve, where the hemoglobin would have zero oxygen bound to it. In pulse oximetry, we look to measure typically a percentage of this, and that percentage is a mixture. So here we are showing 50% arterial oxygenation would be 50% um, oxygenated hemoglobin and 50% deoxygenated hemoglobin, and the absorption spectra is a similar mixture where it's half of the oxygenated absorption and half of the deoxygenated absorption. In pulse oximetry, we use two LEDs to look at the absorption of the blood. We use a red LED in the 660 nanometer range and a near infrared LED in the 900 nanometer range. If we look at the absorption coefficient, what we can notice is as blood deoxygenates, or as the saturation decreases, going from the red curve to the blue curve, that the red absorption will be increasing. If we look at the infrared LED, we notice the opposite happens. As we go from the red curve to the blue curve, we see that absorption is decreasing. And so in pulse oximetry, the key is to use our LEDs and to look at their optical signals and relate them back to the absorption in the arterial blood. We do that by focusing in on the PLEF. And so the PLEF is created because arterial blood content changes during the cardiac cycle. Now there are a lot of things that can cause light to be attenuated as it travels from the LED to the detector. Uh, those could be how the sensor is constructed, how well it gets light into and out of the tissue. It could be what is present uh, what other tissue is present, such as bone, tendon, water, or fat, um, as well as the blood. How much venous blood do you have? And then lastly, what we'll see is the arterial blood. However, it's only the arterial blood that's changing in time. And as, uh, as blood is pushed into the arteries, you see an increase in that light loss due to increase in absorption. And as it's squeezed out, you see a decrease in that light loss because you're decreasing the absorption. So in pulse oximetry, we look at this plath, and the plath is composed of two main parts, 
a, a component that's changing with time, which we will refer to as the AC component, and a component that is relatively static, or the DC component in time. And by looking at these two aspects, we can start to understand what the absorption was on the blood. So we can take this case where first we'll say we have low optical absorption. If we have low optical absorption, um, we know that we're going to have a relatively high DC component because we're getting a lot of light through the tissue. Now, if the blood increases optical absorption, two things will happen. The DC component will decrease due to the increased attenuation of the blood. However, during that cardiac cycle, what we'll also notice is that the AC component increases. And that's because the light is more strongly modulated due to the stronger absorption. So comparing these two components, what we notice is at high optical absorption, AC is increasing, DC is decreasing, and the opposite at low optical absorption. Overall, what we can see is that this AC over DC, or the percent modulation, is increasing with increasing optical absorption. And so this is a key, a key thing that we can look at with pulse oximetry. Here we can go back to our absorption spectra of blood, and we can look at a high saturation case where primarily the blood is oxygenated. In this situation, we have low red absorption, so we get a low percent mod of the red. We have higher infrared absorption, so we have a higher percent mod of the infrared. As that blood desaturates, as it goes to lower saturations, the red absorption increases, as we talked about, resulting in a stronger modulated signal, a higher percent mod. And what we see is that the infrared signal decreases, and it results in a lower percent modulated signal. And that brings us to the last factor that we can use a calibration curve to calculate SpO2. And so it's with the modulation ratio that we look at here that trends with saturation. So the modulation ratio is the AC of the DC of the red over the AC and DC of the infrared, or the red percent or the red modulation over the infrared modulation. And we know at high saturations that's a small number, and at low saturations, it's a large number. And what we can do is develop a calibration curve. A calibration curve. We'll take a specific modulation ratio R and convert that to a saturation or an SpO2 with a proper calibration curve, which is typically empirically derived for that pulse oximetry setup. With that, we've covered three important aspects of pulse oximetry. First, you have to measure the pulse. Once you measure the pulse, you're able to then determine the absorption ratio of the red and infrared LEDs. From that ratio of red, of that absorption ratio, you are then able to convert to an SpO2 or a saturation. Please tune in next week for a new segment from this series wherever you find your podcasts. This is the Medtronic MedEd Learning Experience. Thank you for listening.